Um, so today we are going to continue with the example we saw last time and uh, expand on it, of course. We'll probably get into doing images today um, and talk a little bit more about CSS and uh, that sort of stuff. So here is where we left off. to get um, colors that I thought would be good for this page. I picked a shade of blue and I did that. Um, how many colors should you have on a page? Well, there's no absolute number, um, but the color wheel gives you four. And you may think, well, four, that's not a lot. Well, that's true. But do keep in mind that you sort of get white and black for free. Right? Those, you know, you can always use white and black uh, on your page. So that expands it to six. Um, you don't want so many colors so that it overwhelms the user. Um, you want to keep, I, I would say, four, five, six, including white, black, and possibly shades of gray. Those are all. You know, that should be enough. Keep in mind that, that you use color on your page for a couple reasons. First of all, you want your page to aesthetically look good. All right? Secondly, you want your page uh, to sort of reflect the brand or the mood of what content it's expressing. How many of you have been on the page for Barbie today? The Barbie dolls. How many of you have been? Okay, we have one. All right. Without looking at it, what color do you think it is? Pink. It's pink, exactly. Okay, white. it's white, but there is a lot of pink contained within it, all right? So, it reflects sort of the brand, and it reflects sort of the mood that it was trying to create. On the other hand, if we were to go to, say, some heavy metal band, all right, what color do you think their page is going to be? Black. It's probably going to have a black background, and probably has black print on top of it. You can't even read it. They're so metal, you can't even read their web page, right? Um, but the idea here is, is that's, a, that's a sort of a secondary reason of using color. And, or I won't even say secondary. That's, a, that's the second reason that we're going to list because that's important as well. It's not less important than making it look attractive. And a third way is to sort of help your users visually organize your page by, by putting the navigation into, by putting different sections in different colors that sort of helps your user to easily spot some of the main components of your page. And if you use colors, for example, to emphasize something, you see something as a different color, you assume that there's some, something special about it. If everything on the page is in one color font, for example, and something else is in a different font or a different size font or a different color of font, that immediately sets that off to you all right, as something different. And it sort of draws your attention to it. So you use color for those reasons. And keeping those reasons in mind, uh, you want to limit the colors to a reasonable number, right? If everything is a different color, then you're not really emphasizing or showcasing anything, right? It's just sort of all a jumble of uh, a mess of colors. And it won't be attractive anymore, and it probably won't be reflective of your brand or the mood that you're trying to set. So four or five colors in many cases will be enough. Now, um, I'm going to go and let's, let's edit this page and 
see a look, uh, take a look at what we have. All right. We have in the HTML section, uh, or in the head section, we have a style tag that contains the CSS code. One thing I'd like to mention is I graded the first lab assignment, and the first lab assignment for the most part was good. There's a couple issues that seem to crop up from time to time, and some people had big issues with them, some people just had tiny issues with them, but I do want to go over them. First of all, make sure every start tag has an ending tag. So you have a start HTML tag way up here, make sure that at the very bottom you have an end HTML tag. All right, so the HTML tags come in pairs. So for a start tag, you have an ending tag. The head and body are the two tags within the HTML tag. Everything that's going to appear on your screen is going to be in the head tag. I'm, I'm slap my face. Everything that's going to appear on the screen is going to be in the body tag, not the head tag. The head so far only contains the title and the style. The head isn't part of the body and the body, body isn't part of the head. They're both part of the HTML document. So you should have HTML tag, head and body, head containing title and CSS code, the body containing everything else that's going to appear on the screen. Okay? So if you do something like this, I saw a few examples of like this. Your page might display right, but that's, that's not proper coding. So, so don't do that. Um, I also saw something like this, where you had code that was outside of the head or body section. And that is also not correct. All this stuff belongs in the body section. As I graded your stuff, I tried to describe what was wrong with it. If my comments aren't clear, then talk to me and, and I'll be glad to review them with you in more detail. You can redo your assignment if you didn't get full credit. So if I'm a little bit vague, it's because I want you to take my comments and sort of figure out yourself what part you did wrong. And if you're having trouble doing that, then I'll be glad to help you. All right, the CSS code. We looked at these hex codes, and last time we just copied and pasted them. Pasted them. Um, but we can sort of tell what colors are um, based on, we, we can tell what colors they are based on these codes. These codes are really three two-digit codes combined. So let me open up another document and let me copy this in. This is a color. Alright. This uses what's called the RGB, red, green, and blue method for describing a color. So in physics, all light, you can get any shade by combining red, green, and blue. The pound sign is simply something telling me that I'm using this kind of notation for color. Because there's a couple, there's at least three different ways uh, that I know of off the top of my head that you can describe a color. And one is by many colors have a name associated with them. And we saw a list of those last time where you can just put in the name. All right. This is using what's called the hexadecimal code, and the pound sign means that we're using the hexadecimal code. The hexadecimal code is really composed of three two-digit codes. The first of which specifies how much red is in the color. The second of which specifies is how much blue's in, no, green is in the color. The third specifies how much blue is in the color. All right, so RGB. So, what would this color be? It'd be blue. And it wouldn't just be blue, it would be the bluest of blue. Alright? These last two, these two digits are FF, are as, are as high as you can make that value. This value is what is called a hexadecimal. 
And our normal number system is base 10, right? We have 10 digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 10 digits. And then as we move over to the left, it's 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power, 10 to the third power. It's sort of like that with basic with, with hexadecimal or base 16. With base 16, though, we have to use letters to represent some digits. So A, B, C, D, E, and F are the next highest digits after 9. So if you were counting in hexadecimal, you would count this way. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, A, 1, B, 1, C, 1, D, 1, E, 1, F, 2, 0, 2, 1. I should just do that the rest of the class until I get through FF. The highest number then is FF, right? So the higher the number in the first position, the higher number it is. All right, just like... Nine, you know, 90 is bigger than 40, right? Because the 9 in the 10 spot is bigger than the 4 in the 10 spot, all right? So, we know that 8 is bigger than 7, but we know A is bigger than 8 or 7. So, therefore, this, this, this color that I described here is predominantly blue, all right? We can tell that because it has the biggest number. Now, the higher number this is, the more intens intensity this is. So this is a bright blue, uh, just a bright, shiny blue. Something like this would be what? A darker blue. A darker blue. All right. What color would this be? Black. It'd be black. Imagine we have three lights shining. I don't know if any of you guys remember the old big screen TVs, not the newfangled ones they have that are really good, but like the old ones, like that you would you would see like, um, I don't know, your rich uncle or in a bar or whatever. They would have three lights that shined in of three different colors, all right? And imagine a, a, a room that's dark and the only light is these three lights that shine together and form a, a single circle on the screen. If you turn all the lights off, that's what, that's what three zeros mean. It means that they're all turned down as low as they can go, so they're off. If that was the case, it would be, the, the, the thing on the screen would be black. If I turned up the blue as high as I could, that would be a, a bright blue. All right? If I turned up the red and blue high, what would it be? Purple. If I turn down the red a little bit, what would it be? Still purple, but how would you describe that purple compared to the other purple? Pardon me? Uh, gee, I don't know the names, so I don't know. It might be violet. It would be a bluer shade of purple, all right, because the blue is higher than the red. So... I don't know what the name for that is, but it would be it would be a bluer shade of purple. And if I did the opposite, it would be a redder shade of purple. And you can get any color that you want by mixing these in. What do you think you get if all the numbers are the same? White. No. You get white if... Oh, I, I thought it was white. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking. That's okay. my fault. All right, that's all right. White would be all the colors turned up all the way. All the colors, though, not turned up all the way will give you what? Gray. Will give you gray. All right. What kind of gray? Well, it depends how high or low the numbers are. So, for example, this would be a darker shade of gray. All right, it would be a gray that's closer to black. This would be a gray that's closer to white. All right. Here's the good news, all right? The good news is, if you didn't understand a single word I said about this, it's okay, because usually you can simply cut and paste the codes, right? 
So we didn't know any of this last week, or last class. Uh, yeah, last week. Yet we still were able to use the colors because we simply went and copied and pasted the code. All right? So uh, that's, that's good news. The other way to represent colors is by putting in RGB and then in parentheses putting in three regular decimal numbers that can range from 0 to 255. So that would be black. This would be white. This would be purple. This would be a bluish shade of purple, and so on. So there's three ways that you can describe the color of something. Usually, if I know the color name, I'll, I'll just use the name. So I put color white there. But I could just as well put color pound sign F, 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 F. And it works the same. I'm going to simplify this a little bit, but I'm going to make the body have a background of white. So I could say pound sign F, F. Did I already do that one? I'll do RGB 255, 255, 255, and so it gives that. Let's say I want to make these, because these seem a little dark now, a little hard to read against there, so I'm going to go and make the color on those H2s, could make them white, or I could say, let's make them a light shade of gray. So I'll go C, 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 C. All right. So it's a little bit different color um, than the white, but it still, it, it makes it more readable than it was before. Now, colors are just one thing about CSS, and if people get stuck in lab and there's something that they really want to do, I generally will help them out even if we haven't covered it yet. But know that we're going to cover a lot more stuff about this. You know, there's tons of stuff. We can change the fonts. We can change the size of the fonts. We can put borders around things. Um, we can change the width of things. We can center things, and so on. All right? So, um, as I'm working through this in class, I'll probably just, you know, throw in an example here or there. And by the end of the semester, we'll cover a lot of the things that you can do with CSS. But if there's ever something in class that you, uh, in a lab that you want to do in CSS and we haven't covered it yet, it's okay to ask. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll go, I'll go over it with you. Um, typically, I'll probably want to say, I'll probably say, like, well, we'll go over this later, but if you want to know it now, I'll go over it now. And then you can decide if you're interested or not. All right, let's make a second page here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a skiing page. Okay? Um, Actually, I'm going to make a curling page, all right? And it's going to be called curling.html. Now, it's probably safe to say that I want my curling page to look almost exactly like this page with a couple differences, right? The heading should say curling instead of home, and this paragraph should be about curling instead of the general information. So one thing that you do when you get one page down, you know, if I have to do a, if I have to do a, uh, a project, I don't necessarily write six, eight, ten pages from scratch, right? I'll get one of them down and then I'll just copy it and change what needs to be copied, all right? And that way you can ensure consistency, and that's a good thing. One of the things that you want to do in web development is make sure that your page have a consistent look, all right? 
That way people will begin to understand where the navigation is, where the search bar is, where your footer is, all those sorts of things. So, um, I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this page. And I'm going to rename it curling. And I'm going to go into it and I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to change a few things. Curling. Change this to say curling. Instead of Greek text, I'm going to go and I'm going to pull text, some real text, which I'm allowed to do, right? I just have to give the source that it's from. So let me go and Google curling. paste it in my paragraph. Now, this is just like a term paper. If I cite it, if I cite something, I need to, or if I use something from somewhere else, I have to cite it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the link and put a link to it. This is almost like putting a footnote or putting a citation in a bibliography. Now remember, we're allowed to do this because we're in an educational context. All right? So because we're in a, a learning environment, in a, in a school environment, well, I'm allowed to borrow text from other places. If you were doing your own winter sporting goods store or a sporting goods store and you sold curling stuff, you would not be allowed to copy and paste text from somewhere unless they gave you permission. All right? All right. Save that and now when I bring it up, there's my page about curling. Nice thing is if I go to the home page, go to the curling page, it's a very consistent experience for the user. It doesn't even look like some of those things move. All right? because I've, I've started with a template, and I've cloned that template, all right? So that way I'm not making six changes if I change all the pages, or seven, page, uh, seven changes if I go in, in, in 
uh, if, if I change something. Or I'm not making seven pages from scratch, rather, if I make seven pages. I'm going to take one and I'm going to clone it. All right. So, so far, so good. So now we have two pages that look pretty much the same. But we got a little problem. What if I decide to change something in the style? All right. So let's say I look at this and I say, you know what? That white background is a little plain. Let's go and let's make the body of the page a light shade of gray. Again, it's not like I have these memorized, but I know 200 is a big number. All right. So 200 is going to be a lighter shade of gray. So now I go look at my curling page, and there, I kind of like that. That looks better. Well, what's the problem going to be? When I click back to home, it's still stuck with the old one. Well, I could copy and paste it. But you know what? Software developers and web developers have better things to do, right? We have to play our video games, right? We have to go get our fancy coffee drinks, you know? Um, and more importantly, if you're talking about a big site that has a whole bunch of pages, we may forget to do it on one of the pages, right? And we're going to run into the difficulty then that we're going to have inconsistencies on our site. And one page may look one way, one page may look another way. And that's not good, right? Because a good design rule is to keep our pages looking consistent so that everything so we give that consistent look and feel throughout all the pages on in our, in our website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the CSS code from the HTML code and put the CSS code in its own file. And then every page that I create, I'm going to not, how do I want to say this? I'm, I'm going to not uh, have the CSS code in it. I'm going to have a pointer to the file that contains the CSS. So the bottom line is if I change the code in one place, it will change it everywhere on the site. So I do that this way. I'm going to copy out. I'm going to copy the CSS code. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to paste that code in. I'm going to get rid of the style tag, because if you put it in its own file, it doesn't need a style tag. I'm going to save this as something. So I'm going to save it as style.css. And I'm going to say that it is a CSS file. So now I have three files out there, my two pages and my one CSS file. Now, what I have to do is I have to change this code to point to that file. And we do that this way. We use a link tag. This is a different kind of link than the A, than the anchor, a link to another page. This simply says to bring in the style code from this external file. Link. Type equals text slash CSS. Rel equals style sheet. And href equals, and we put the name of the file. Now, if it's in the same folder, you just have to put style.css. If I did that right, you don't need a hand tag for that. Um, you really don't for that. You could put one in, and it wouldn't hurt. But yeah, that, that's that's one exception to the rule. Hey, Mike. Yes. What's that last part you did? I have uh, link type and the relation. And then href. Okay. So I 
could do this if I wanted to. I could put an end tag, but you could also omit it. All right, so now let's go and hit refresh. And it, whoops. And it looks the same as it did before. Now here's the nice part of it. I could do the same thing in the main page. I can replace that with my link. And now, both pages look the same. Game page, that's right. So, home that. Now, and here's the nice thing, all right? Here's the nice thing is that I can go and make any changes I want to in that CSS file, and that change will be reflected in all the files that use that link. So, I'm, I just did two files here, right? You know, but if I build all seven of these files, or if I did a hundred files, it wouldn't matter. Make the change in one place, and that's reflected throughout it. There's a lot of things as a software developer or as a web developer you do to make your life easier to change things later on. Because you know no matter what you do, at some point you're going to need to change it. All right? Sometimes people might just decide, well, I want different colors. You know, it's not quite as readable as it could be. So let's change the colors a little bit to make it more readable. Maybe a company merges or changes their brand, changes their logo, all right? You might want to change the color scheme to match that. Maybe seasonally. Uh, I worked for a large jeweler, and they would have their, their site sort of color schemed depending on the time of year it was. You know, Christmas, they would have Christmassy colors on their page. Um, around Valentine's Day, they would have, you know, the Valentine's Day sort of color scheme. Uh, around Mother's Day, they would have, I don't know, mother, motherly looking colors. All right? It's easy to do if all your CSS code's in one place. And then you don't have to go and make sure all your pages are changed. So, for example, let's say I wanted to, it's a very poor case, I'm just doing it just to illustrate, but what if I decide, hey, I want the background of my page to be yellow. Probably not a good idea, but I want it to really stand out. So I'll say background yellow, and this page has it, so does the home page. So I make the change in one place, all the pages will use that. All right. I look at that and say, boy, that was a bad idea making it yellow. Let's change it back. Yes, question. That's an excellent question. If, for example, there was something a little bit different about the curling page for whatever reason, yes, you would put, you could still use the external style sheet, but you could put the little changes as part of the page itself. Like, let's just, uh, let's just say, what if for whatever reason we wanted the curling page to be white, have a background uh, of white?
let's get an image to put on this page. All right. I'm going to grab an image off the web first. Uh, one thing that we will talk about next time is we will talk about what are ways that you can obtain images legally. All right. And if I'm not mistaken, the Danish curling team has outrageous pants. There they are. So I'm going to go and grab a picture of the Danish curling team. I need one of these suits. I'll have to see if I can get one on eBay. So I'm going to take this image. So I'm going to go here. Oh, I stand correct. It's not, it's, not, it's not Danish. It's Norwegian. So my bad. So I'm going to go and I'm going to save this image. And I'm going to save it to my Olympics folder. So I'm going to put it in the folder with the rest of my stuff. All right. That's important to do because as of now, all the things that I've done have been on the assumption that all your files are in the same place. Later on, we'll, we'll look at, well, what happens if you have a lot of files and you want to organize them differently. But right now, the assumption is that all our files are in the same folder. So if I were to put this image on my page, the tag to do that is the image tag. So I'm going to go to my curling page. And I'm going to say IMG. That means it's an image. SRC equals, I put the name of the image. And it's important to remember you need to include the extension, the file extension. Essentially, there are um, there's three main image types uh, that are used, PNG, JPG, or JPEG, and uh, GIF, G-I-F. Now, JPEGs, some end with the .jpe extension, some end with .jpeg, some end with .jpg. When I say the file extension, I mean the three or four letters that are after the name of the file. All right? On all the machines here on campus, those are visible. Your machine on, at home might be configured to hide those because the average user, you know, generally doesn't need to know those file extensions. But we do. So you can turn on file extensions if they're turned off. And if anyone needs to know how to do that, um, I can show them in lab. Anyhow, the name of this is called flowerpants.png. So I'm going to put that in. It's in the same folder, so I don't need to put anything before it. I'm going to add something else. I'm going to add an alternate text. And this is for a couple reasons. One is, just in case something happens to that image, it will display a text saying what should be there. Uh, secondly, this is useful for accessibility, um, whereas people have screen readers and the screen reader reads the page to them. So, The image is another tag that doesn't have an ending tag. What we often do with these tags is we do this. Image, and then slash greater than bracket. That indicates that this is a, a, a start and end tag rolled into one. So I could do that with the link as well. Even though, strictly speaking, the rules of HTML allow some tags not to have ending tags, I like to put those ending tags in regardless. So, when we do that, 
this is what our page looks like now. Alright, I'm going to put a credit to this. I hope I got the link. So I can put a credit here that says image from I think SB Nation was the name of the site. And I'm going to put the image above the credits, because I didn't intend to put it below the credits. So now, it looks like this. I'm going to move the credits into the footer. That's a kind of a good place for them. And I'll put each one in its own paragraph. I could make an, a list of them if I wanted to do it that way.
the compressed folder, the zip file. All right. And then at my end, when I go to grade it, I would download everything that you had. I would decompress it or uncompress it, and then I could go and run and see all the pages. Remember that inside this compressed file, it looks like those other files are there, but they're really not. All right. Um, because they're sort of smashed together into one file. So, in other words, I can't see the image, I can't see the CSS. So, for me to be able to view all that, I would have to go and extract the files, make the individual files, and then I could go back in and, uh, and view your page. Any questions about this? All right, next time on Thursday, we will study more, uh, we'll review more what you can do with images. All right. We'll see you in a